I wrote this poem, and it's called Survival Instinct. I want to walk the esker, but with each step in snow, my feet sink deeper. The wind so cold, it burns my fingers. I look to the slope, but find daunting the prospect of snow swallowing more of me with each step of climb. And so, with regret, I turn, and on return, I trace the hollows where I stepped before, follow once more my own trail, that I might soon be warm. Thank you. Between being a little sick and taking care of grandchildren, there's just not enough time. It's always time for poetry. I wrote this poem during the last financial crisis, and with the government shutdown and the way our government's been working, it appears that we're not too far away from that again. Uh, open letter to Congress. Where's your shame, you ignorant sinners? Fat on tax dollar dinners, while the hearse rolls down Main Street for you. It's just another dollar, just another day. The people have a right to know why. The disparity in this country drums a beat so deep. No longer are we land of the free. We become an equal opportunity employer of economic slavery, indifferent to color of skin, language spoken, and national origin. The stakes have never been so high, and the beneficiaries so few. Titans of industry rewarded for swallowing businesses and families, neighborhoods and communities, one foreclosure at a time. While the rest of us set another place at the table so that someone goes less hungry as we bow our heads in mourning for a nation that has lost its self-respect. Self-respect isn't everything. It's the only thing. This class war has always been here and will remain until we stop treating each other like acid rain, a parasitic food chain, a prejudice bearing Congress's name. Amid the rhetoric and confusion, the strength of a nation is still measured by the health of its people. And right now, too many feel too poor with too much unhealth care and not much more to say after their little pink houses have been taken away except the American people don't like to be cheated. If we're gonna to continue to be the, most, the civilized people of the most powerful nation in the world, we ought not waste this opportunity to stand proud in the face of humanity. Thank you. I'm gonna do something which I haven't done before, which is I, I write songs, I'm gonna read the words of the song without the music. Uh, 1929, my great-grandmother built a house and my grandparents built one next door. It's called the house of my childhood. The house of my childhood sits high on a hill where the wild deer are grazing in the tall meadows still and the sunset flames over all the cloud-dappled sky. Oh, the house of my childhood, I bid you goodbye. Great-grandmother built here when Mama was small. Then the town was all dirt roads. They kept horses in stalls. And next door, Grandma gardened, grew snapdragons and flocks, while my Grandpa told tall tales that knocked off our socks. The worms in the garden were wiggly and long, all the robins would listen to the worm siren song. We rented fat ponies and we raced through the hay while my brothers drove farm trucks in summer's bright day. Yet time changes all things. 
the cottage is sold. For my daddy, he's long gone, and my mom has grown old. So we sit on the porch chairs and we watch the sun set as the light slides from rosy to cloudy and wet. The cupboards are barren. The furniture's gone. Antique plates have been sold off from far China they'd come. All the treasures of lifetime fill the big garbage bin. Now my maple's uprooted so sun can glare in. The house of my childhood sits high on a hill where the wild deer are grazing in the tall meadows still and the sunset flames over all the cloud-dappled sky. Oh, the house of my childhood, I bid you goodbye. Um, this is called The Soul's Secret Dreaming, written a number of years ago. Um, there is a tender sense, a presence with self we need to survive in this world. The soul is waiting, asking silently, when? When will there be time? Time to plant seeds to pick flowers, to have bare feet on earth with no other agenda. When time for tea between warming palms and watching the starlings swirl like autumn leaves in a sudden wind, the moon rise yellow over the trees, the light in your child's eyes. When time for listening with the ear of your heart to all the voices inside you, letting your dance unfold like a flower in the sun. Can you trust what you know inside? We need more than food and each other, more than a home and work. We need ourselves in the velvet night of the soul's secret dreaming. And one ear open to that dreaming in the bright light of day. We do not find ourselves by chance, but only by loving, determined intent. Thank you. So I wrote this one last month for Songwriters in the Round. It's one of those things where every month the audience picks a prompt and the next month the songwriters have to write a song to that prompt. And that month the, the prompt was in 20 years. And I didn't really want to look 20 years ahead because it felt kind of depressing. So I went back 3,000 years <laughs> to a 20 year period. It's an old story, obviously, but it's got some universal aspects. It's called Penelope. She sat by the window, rocking her baby alone in the room, staring out at the sea. She sang to her child, your father the king has gone to the war, but he'll come back to me, he'll battle the God. But he's clever and brave If it takes twenty years He'll return on the waves to the peace Of our olive tree bed She stood in the doorway, called for her son. The messenger tells me 
The war has been won, the walls have been breached, towers torn down, your father has sailed. He's on his way home, though giants and whirlpools and witches delay, he'll win his way home at the end of the day. I've ruled for ten years, but I'll give back the crown. He'll see how we prospered, see how you've grown, and he'll rest. In our olive tree bed. She sat at her loom, whispered her plan. In twenty years a boy grows to a man. The nobles are restless, your father's still missing. They say I must marry, the land needs a king. I've done all I can to play for more time. Now you string his bow, I'll pour the wine. But I dream that tomorrow he'll stride through the door, handsome men hail as when he went to war. Prove to the people he's come to no harm. Slaughter the suitors, take me in his arms and we'd rest. In our olive tree bed, in the peace. Of our olive tree bed Thank you. So the poem I am going to read today is um, really a shout out to the Women's March and uh, started two years ago. I was in Washington, D.C. two years ago in Cambridge last year, but I'm here today, and I want to read this poem. There's a lot of work right now with DNA, and there's a particular kind of DNA called mitochondrial DNA that this poem's about. Mitochondria. From mother to daughter through the generations, the mitochondria stays the same. Ancient codes remain for continuity through matrilineal bloodlines. Mother wisdom comes densely packaged in places like the muscles, the liver, and the brain. Mother wisdom in our thoughts and movements. Endurance, perseverance, consistency, our mother's wisdom passed down. So let us access this place within Hear the voices, hear the songs, honor their actions, feel their courage, acknowledge their joy, be their strength. Collective grandmother wisdom will always see us through, now and forever. Thank you. I wrote this song a long time ago when I first began writing, when I first came to the United States, and then it sort of languished and went away and sat there for a while. I didn't know whether it was finished until I picked it up again fairly recently and realized that it needed to be molded and made a little better. I liked it originally, but it was didn't seem to have much in the way of an impact. So, therefore, my introduction. There's this man I once saw a long time ago working in a, at art school, sweeping corridors, mopping up the floors, dusting up the stairs, 
what is done and seen, no one cares. Under the stairs, beside the entrance hall An old man sits and stares at relics of his first war Hanging on the wall Near pictures of his kids who've grown up And now are gone By a certificate from the Masons Next to a picture from his old school When he was 21 His hair long gray is thinning And is balder by the day in the hay His watch for a faithful service is hanging on a chain And his joints are fine as long as it doesn't rain The weather has become Summer's gone A wool hat for his ears A scarf and rug To keep his old legs warm He reads the Sunday papers With eyes that are weak and worn Waiting for the old widow to call him And to tell him that her heat is not on Sweeping corridors Mopping up the floors Dusting up the stairs what is done and seen, no one knows. No one cares. He hides away his memories in a wild and a scary place. You'd never know by looking at his weathered kindly face He fought in the Pacific Came home in 44 Never marches in parades On July the Still remembers the day when he came home from overseas a long time ago. He says it was PTSD, but he still plays cards for matches with the old sergeant from upstairs. Humming Yankee Doodle snatches And sometimes you can even hear him Say his prayers To Mary on the wall There are 
their shadows in the hall. Thank you. so complicated. It's a negotiation, you know, give and take. For example, older Americans will pay more for health care. That's a given. Millions and millions will lose coverage, and that's a taken. Oh, and if you have a pre-existing condition, just get over it. Um, because you don't want to go swimming in that high-risk pool. So don't get sick. Don't get old, and above all, don't be poor. Take two aspirin, but don't call me in the morning. Take a snapshot, ask a friend what she thinks she got, but don't call me in the morning. You're not covered anymore. Now, ladies, do be careful. If you get knocked up, don't go running to Planned Parenthood. It will probably be locked up. And fellas, why should you have to pay for maternity care? What do men have to do with making babies? But don't make yourself crazy thinking about it. Mental health care is not an essential benefit. So don't get sick, don't get old, and above all, don't be poor. Take two aspirin, but don't call me in the morning. Search the internet. Try applying a tourniquet, but don't call me in the morning. You're not covered anymore. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. <laughs> uh, good to be here. Thank you. This first one's called On Joy. Feet. 
and aboard the good ship chance take my voyage and sail all the way across the street some have islands in the sky some have islands in the sea but my island's always here that's my hang up to be free sail away. sail away boy sail away sail away Sometimes I think and I find that conscience is The most important thing to a man To know he stayed and tried and died to live On crowded beaches of artificial sand some have islands in the sky, some have islands in the sea, but my island's always here, that's my hang up to be free, sail away, sail away boy, sail away, sail away boy, sail away. Sail, much white light to you all. Thank you so much. Thank you to Karen.